The beauty scientists, Dr. Christy Hamilton and Dr. Roy Kim. Real beauty with at the height. What about, uh, what does the classic otoplasty patient look like? Yeah, the classic otoplasty patient has prominent ears and they actually have pretty much all the structures that you want to see in terms of the ear. However, it's really too large in proportion to the rest of the face or it cups out or both. And so classically, you and I have been taught that we can operate on patients before they're too heavily socialized, typically around the age of six or seven. That's an extremely common age for children to have autoplasty or ear surgery because we can actually pin the ears back. Uh, there are certain things we can do to actually make them look smaller or at least optical illusion wise smaller. And that is a great age as well as a surgeon because the cartilage is still a little flexible. It's not ultra stiff. And so we can actually make a change. How do you feel about that versus waiting until a patient's a little older, let's say 16, 17, when puberty is done? I think as long as you have a more mature child, I think the earlier you can get to it, if it's something that they want, the better it is. Just why, why continue the cycle of bullying and, and suffering? And I, I use the term otoplasty, but for the lay audience, that means ear pinning. So Dr. Roy and I always like to use the uh, the medical terminology. But I think that the sooner you can address something that's just causing profound pain, psychological pain, as assuming that, you know, you can see that it's an anomaly and a little bit outside the realm of normal, I think that's helpful for children. Yeah, totally agree. And then obviously, if the patient is younger, in other words, six or seven, they may have started first or second grade, they're not totally socialized, and they don't realize, especially at the age of three or four, that they may have prominent ears. Yes. And so you kind of take care of it before it becomes an issue. And we have parents coming in asking those questions. And so I think that's where it really comes down to us as the surgeon, as the physician to have that, you know, make sure that we are performing ethical operations because those kids may not even realize yet that there's quote unquote a problem. And so if we're going to intervene and perform surgery on them and permanently change them before they even really have an opinion on it, we have to make sure that we're all on the same page and doing something that's going to benefit the child and, and first do no harm as is our ethical and moral obligation. Thank you for joining us on The Beauty Scientist. Be sure to visit thebeautyscientist.com and learn more about modern beauty and connect with Dr. Hamilton and Dr. Kim.